Hi guys, uh, today we're going to try something different. We're going to run a uh, sub-program call, which is uh, using uh, my uh, NASA controller. I'm able to uh, call sub-programs within the main program using the M98 and 99. Uh, hopefully that this will help you guys out. Wow. And then on the same height, there's a 50 thou depth. Uh, I've been using a uh, spring-loaded engraver, so it require some compression to make it work so that's the setup um, you know, I've got all the files um, in the top directory of the Maso on the F6 screen so essentially uh, you get your, your main program that calls out a series of sub programs uh, and for uh, the main program and program A that I've set up uh, when I load that uh, essentially it's a very small program You've got um, uh, only a few lines of code, and uh, when it calls up the next level, it uses the M98 and the P1. Uh, the P means for program, and it's one, so it's looking for file name one. Some people are getting confused and calling it P1 on the file. It's actually only one, uh, or the, the number that you, you put as the file name. So that's what it's going to call up and. And, it, oh, and then when it returns, it returns to the next line below the 98 and carries on. So I've got a starting code, standard starting code, and a tool change to load the uh, engraving tool, and uh, then an ending code, standard uh, resetting it back to G54 and and so on and so forth. All right, I've got the program loaded, and uh, let's let's uh, see what she can do. Do a tool change, and uh, I just finished probing. We'll switch it out. Get a little die cam on the sample piece, so the part will show up nice and clean. Uh, tool changes are basically pressing the green button. I release the tool, and then That's my engraving tool. We'll uh, process, and there's a die cam on the material to engrave. Um, gone through the tool change request, you can see on the line, and it's about to go into sub program call. So let's press uh, cycle start. And now it's traveling down to my origin. The Start point, and then it's gonna start the engraving. So that's the first subroutine program. I have a single character being engraved. Um, it's just a uh, simple. Uh, Engraving um, uh, G code uh, generator. Um, yeah, that's a second program call in the list. The way I've got them set up is they're doing uh, sequential calls. So the, the one dot NC program has an M98 at the end of it to call up the next program, and it ends with an M99, but it won't return to M99 until. Uh, the next uh, uh, command is completed, so it continues on with the S. So this is uh, program number three. And uh, it's calling out program number three again. So there's the use of the same program to generate a different uh, part in a different work location uh, without having to generate more code. So that's a good example of how you can use it. So this particular one is uh, the program four. Uh, it's the ending code. And this one this can only has an M99 at the end. It doesn't have an M98. So it just uh, will return back and 
essentially you go all the way back to the origin. So now it's done, it's backed up all through all these programs and gone back with M99 to the beginning. And uh, the program finished uh, and uh, returned to the beginning. So that's how that works. I'll uh, show some of the code in, in a little bit. But before that, we're going to run the, the next program, which is program B. So this one, instead of doing a sequential call of 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, where an M98 is in the end of 1, calling out the number 2, and then so on and so forth. This one, I call all of them in the first program. So subprogram B has a call for 10, 20, 30, and 40 in line, and I call up the different uh, G codes. So this is another way of mixing up uh, programs. You can uh, make use of stock or use a different approach to it. So this is the subprogram B. So if you can see there, I have uh, calling P10, and then I have P20, 30, and 40 in there as well. If I go to edit, you can see the, the code. It's got uh, P40, P30, and each of the uh, work offsets are called up here. They're not in the subprogram. So it's a different approach to doing it, but it gives you the same basic result. So uh, here we go, I'll run this one and it, it should give us the same end result, uh, it's the exact same uh, programs, just arranged differently. So now it's, uh, it's uh, still in the G54 mode, it's going to be calling out the uh, first code and now it's going to switch over to 55. Now Masio uh, doesn't update the screen when it goes into the subroutines. It's something you have to be aware of. Um, your subroutines have to work or else it, you won't get the end result. And there's really no way of knowing with it in Masio, but it works well anyways. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's not displayed. It's actually working. So that's all that really matters. So. Got good repeatability uh, on this machine, it's not bad. But going up and down is in my uh, main program. I could probably make that a little shorter, maybe 0.1 instead of 1 inch. Uh, but uh, it's working pretty good. Uh, the end result is going to be uh, an engraving that nice and clean. So, I want to try something different program with M98 and M90 codes. Um, it sure works pretty good. Uh, one of the tricks uh, to remember is to enter a, a carriage return at the end of your program to make it rewind. It wants an extra line of code. I did the same thing in the sub-programs after the M99 uh, program it, uh, command. Yeah, I put an extra carriage return, this is a lot, making sure that it's being entered. Um, so that's just a tip to help you out. So hope you guys like this. Uh, leave me comments and feel free to subscribe.